Okay, so on this problem, you're looking for both the angle formed by two vectors and a vector projection of 3, 4 onto negative 5, 12. So the two equations, or sorry, yeah, the two equations you're going to need are cosine theta equals u dot v over magnitude u times magnitude v. Okay? Again, I don't, I just want this in calculator ready form on the test, so I, I don't, you know, we're not actually calculating an angle here. You have to be a little bit careful because theta is your angle. Okay, so if you just plug everything in, you're not going to be quite done. So what I do here is that we're trying to find the angle between 3, 4 and negative 5, 12. 3, 4 we'll call u. We'll call this u and that v. Okay, so all you would do is just go cosine theta equals, now u dot v. u dot v would be 3 times negative 5 plus what? 4 times 12. 4 times 12. Similar to the problem we just did. That's a dot product. Okay, and that's over magnitude of u. What's magnitude mean? Length. The length of u. So if we were doing it without like a shortcut here, the magnitude of u would equal square root 3 squared plus 4 squared, which is just 5. Okay, because the magnitude is, you're just basically using Pythagorean theorem or distance formula, right, to find that magnitude. So magnitude v would be what? 13. 13. Because we did, we would do negative 5 squared plus 12 squared. And you guys already know that those are special or Pythagorean triples and got those magnitudes. Okay, so we solved that there. And I, I would like you to have, I mean, obviously I could type that in my calculator. That'd be good enough for calculator ready form. If you can't do 13 times 5, you don't want to do that, that's fine. But try to do the top. So that'd be negative 15 plus 48. That would be, what, 33? Positive. So 33 over, what's 15, 13 times 5? 65. Okay, now you have to be a little bit careful here because you want to jump to, oh, that's my answer. You have to do inverse cosine. Do you have a calculator on the problem? No, it's, cal it's calculator ready. Yeah. So this would be good enough. Realistically, if you did inverse cosine of this setup, I'd be okay with that. Why do you have to find the inverse cosine? So the second thing they ask here is to find the components of a projection of 3, negative 4 onto negative 5, 12. Okay? Again, if I visually did this, what it is, is I have 3, 3 4 looks something like that. Negative 5, 12 looks something like this. And I want the vector projection, so I want the shadow of this onto that making a right angle. I want this vector right here. Do you need to know that? You should know that, but it's not imperative to get this problem right that you know that. That's just the, the concept behind it. Okay. Now, vector projections. If I'm projecting, projecting u onto v, the formula I'm going to use is u dot v over the magnitude of v squared times vector v. So what this is doing, basically, this is our vector v, which is negative 5, 12. Wait, is that u squared or v squared? v squared. Yeah, and that's important because if you're going on to v, the magnitude of v squared will be in the bottom. Wait, what's the weird v on the side right there? That's just a vector v. They're the same v's. But the difference here is that, see... This is a magnitude of v. That's a number. Yeah. Dot u dot v is a number. This is a vector. So when I do 5 and I use my pointy brackets, that's vector v. Now we already found, here's a nice thing. We already did u dot v. u dot v was 33. 
So that would be 33 over, and we already have the magnitude V, which was what? 13. 13. There's magnitude V, so it would be 13 squared. That's your answer. We could simplify it a little further if you wanted to, and I'll just go this way. That's it. So the question was, what did I get 13 from? 13 was the magnitude of V, which is what I need right here. I need magnitude V. I need to find it up here. Oh. It was 13. So I already found that. So that's the nice thing about this problem is you, have, you should have information already. You square it. Gives you 169. Now, if you actually wanted to find the, with a calculator the actual components of the vector, you just multiply these two to get your x component, multiply these two to get your y component, and then you'd be good to go.